Hello everyone. I made um, kind of a mixed up mess of all kind of things here and there. Um, this this pour is going to be strictly instinctive. I don't measure anything or um, weigh anything. Try to make sure this is on. There we go. These paints are uh, leftover paints that I had that were like ready to be tossed out. There was no, not much left. Um, this one turned out to be a lot because I was trying to make a color. So I don't, and I still don't like that color too much. It's kind of like a opaque light burgundy. I was going for like a magenta color. Oh well. This purple has a little bit of blue in it. It's funny because it's, it's, I can see some blue lines going in there. For my um, pouring medium, I use, I like to use uh, this main wax, one coat, polyurethane, and Floetrol. And I use a mixture of 50-50 each. And I find the flow troll is, it has a dull finish, and this gives it more of a brighter, sparkier finish. I don't know. The Liquid Tex pouring medium, the, the expensive stuff, has a shine, so I thought I'd give it my own shine, you know. It, it's worked well for me so far, so I like it. And I use half and half, and I put it in a little uh, hair color bottle and I poured it in each one. Now these are all cheap paints. They're either Apple Barrow or Folk Art or Americana. Just little bits and pieces I had left over paints. And they're very, they're very fluid, so they don't need much water. Um, I, tend, I found with, with my pouring medium mix, it tends to thicken the paint. So what I do is I thin the paint first with water and make sure it's, it's it, when you drip it, it's, it's like a thin thread dripping down. See, a, I don't know if you can see it at the angle it is, but it's a thin thread dripping down. Once I get it that thin, then I give it a good squirt of the pouring medium. And by good squirt, is I just go, I don't know, it's just like... The pouring medium, really, all it is is to keep the paint from falling apart once it dries. So... You put a little bit less and a little bit more depending on how much paint you got. Um, now, for once I, I do that and I mix it with water, it has to be at that thin consistency. Then I squirt it one shot of blaster silicone lubricant on each cup. And this time I decided, because I bought this a long time ago thinking it would work. Uh, it's made by Trojans, a personal lubricant. It's expensive. It was like fifteen dollars for this thing, but it has. It's mostly dimethicone. Dimethicone is the main ingredient, and dimethicol, dimethicol, and fragrance. So that's why I got it. And I've tried it before, and I didn't find it really did much. So this time, I what I did is I combined the two, and see what's going to happen with that. So that's an experiment I haven't done before. Now, I have a turquoise, a royal blue, a cobalt blue, purple. This thing that I try to make it is magenta, which is really like a light burgundy, uh, kind of purplish red, and bright yellow. And this is white paint. This is my white paint mix that I have from, that I use, uh, which is house paint. Just plain white, cheap house paint from Walmart, okay? And I mixed it up with my pouring medium that I make and water. There's no silicone on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix it all together and, and make one big pour and see what happens. So hopefully this comes out cute and you all enjoy it. So I'm going to squirt. I'm going to start off with the white. I'll put a good bit of white at the bottom. And start off with my lightest colors, and I'm only going to put maybe 
a third of that in there. And then some of this green. Now, last time I remember I was, I was squirting the white from way up high. And it was causing it to mix in the cup and make this muddy mess. So I'm going to be careful with the white this time. All right. And now blue. And this purple. And just because I have a lot of this, I'm not going to use much more than the rest of it. And I want to make sure this is well stirred. The silicone does not mix well with the paint. That's the whole purpose of using silicone. It separates your paint. It separates the colors and it causes crazy designs. And it also doesn't mix well when it's just plain in the cup. So I have to keep it nice and stirred the whole time. I'm going to put some more white. I'm going to be gentle with this white. Last time I squirted it just went in there and it just it made this nasty color. I don't know. So I'm going to go back to yellow. And I've got enough for one more squirt. And some of this. I want a bright, colorful picture. That's what I'm going for. Something bright and colorful. Lately I've been doing these dull looking things and just have not come out too good and for some reason the blue always gets lost and I have this purple oh I think this purple is getting lumpy I have to oh, it's good I think the secret to a good pour is, is the texture of the paint. Too thick, don't work. Too thin, don't work. You got to get it just right. And you really don't know what just right is unless you've done this many times. Okay. I still think we got a little bit more to go. I'm pour in the rest of my cups. I'm hoping to get a pretty one this time. I also find that the blue, I mean the, the yellow, tends to disappear. The yellow always turns, either turns into green or orange, depending on how much blue or red you have in the pour. So if you want it very yellowy, put a lot of yellow. Okay, yellow. Then the rest of this one. Now I like what it's doing in the cup. I think it looks pretty cool. Now, from what I understand, and I've seen all everybody else's uh, YouTube videos and whatnot, the best silicone to use is the thread mill silicone. Thread mill oil, it's called. Um, not sure where you could get it, but I'm pretty sure you would get it where they sell thread mills. So, I haven't had a chance to go to any place like Academy or anything to get one. So, I'm very being very gentle with this white. Now the white paint is a heavier pigment and it wants to sink to the bottom. Since we're going to turn this cup upside down, we're going to put the white first. That's why it's got a lot of white at the bottom because it's, once I turn it upside down the white's going to sink down. And the color is going to come up through. And then I'm going to heat it up with a torch. And the torch is going to warm up that silicone. And make it want to pop out from underneath to the top. Causing a chemical reaction with the paint. Pushing the paint cells aside. And creating these beautiful cells. Anyway, that's my story. 
hope it works. And I hope this color comes out good. It's just I'm not too crazy about it. I'm gonna leave a lot behind. And then this the rest of this purple. I picked this color combination because lately I've been I've been doing a lot with this color combination and it seems to work out very well. My favorite color is red. And every time I try to do something with red, it just it doesn't work out. For some reason, red just, maybe I'm not using the right red, being that I use cheap colors. I don't know. Okay, this cup's almost full. I got like about uh, an eighth of a cup left. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna, whoops, it easy. Technical difficulties. Hold on a minute. I want to make sure you guys can see this well. Adjusting the camera. <coughs> All right. Going to pick this up. I'm going to turn it upside down. go and I'm making sure I want to make sure it is in the frame there we go all right before I open the, the cup we'll let that settle down a little bit that the white paint this heavy let it go all the way down and sink I'm going to add some white paint around here and the rest of the canvas. Now this white paint is really more to help the uh, mixture flow better and spread throughout the canvas. It doesn't necessarily mean my whole painting is going to be white. At least that's the theory. When you do these, no two ever come out the same. I've been doing it for months and I haven't been doing too much lately because it's not the cheapest hobby to do but it's so much fun and so addictive and I'm putting a lot of white paint all the way around okay and now I'm gonna just smooth it out and the easiest way I found to smooth it out this with my hands which is what I'm going to do and all that spatula nonsense and things and just like just stick your hands in it of course I got my gloves on today haha <laughs> it is so hard to get paint off your fingernails the rest of your skin comes right off fingernails nope it likes to hold on to your fingernails all right now let's see what this baby got y'all ready i'm gonna move it around a little bit just need a swirl just kind of gently lift the cup and let it plop 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 oh i think i'm gonna like this one yes Look at that. Very interesting. I like that a lot. Cup. Looks pretty, huh? I think I did good this time. Look at those cells. They're just popping up like crazy. I'm going to torch this sucker. Now, some of you have asked about the torch. Um, from what I understand, it's not really necessary. You can have cells without a torch. 
or you could use a heating gun like a paint gun that or an embossing gun I went and bought this this torch at Walmart it's a big one for like $15 A lot of people like to use the torches that you get in the kitchen department, uh, which are made for like, you know, when, when you torch the top of the, uh, oh, I forgot, the creme brulee and things like that. But I love my torch. And wow, look at that. I haven't done anything to it. Now I'm going to move it around. And I'm hoping those cells are going to be good to me this is peacock colors definitely peacock colors wow it's pretty okay I'm just doing it really quick Lost all my cells. I might get some new ones. So I'm going to take this off. And torch again. Now recently I seen on, online some commercials that were done by Michaels on how to do a pour and I'm sure they mean well but they're doing it wrong. But then they only they gotta show the stuff they sell. I don't think they sell silicone. They should sell torches. I don't know about the silicone though. Okay, I lost all my pretty cells. So what I'm going to do is maybe help it along and get a straw. If you get a straw, get with those bendy straws because like, that you can manipulate where your air is going. I'm going to blow and cause some havoc on the top of this. There's one. See how I blew the, all the white is at the bottom? That's a lot of white that I put on there. Do you see any white on here? Nope. Blowing causes these waves, and look at the cells coming up. I think that's pretty good. You can get all the white coming out. Let's see, this area is real neato. This too is just it, this right here, is so dull. Now it's getting more interesting. Let me see, I'm trying to look on here. See how well you guys see this. I'm gonna take the camera down. So 
much shine. See, this is what the blowing does. Isn't that pretty? And it's, it's at first it doesn't look that great, but uh, sitting there, it's like all those cells are coming back up. And right here too. So I think I'm going to blow some more. Maybe around this area here. See, it kind of looks like solid white, but then it starts to move and starts to create its own thing. And right there, let's see, I see the canvas. It's, that canvas is actually peeking through all that. Hmm. Just gently blowing some air into that hole. But I kind of like the hole. I always cover it up later with something else. I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Let me put you back up here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to torch this baby one more time and leave it alone. And let's see what we get tomorrow. The torch is fun though. I was scared of it at first, but it's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's creating more. I think it's gonna do a little bit more. What happened was the, the blowing that I did caused bubbles, and those bubbles popped with the heat. Look how that is veining right here. Gorgeous. I really like this one. This one came out pretty. I might do my bubbles on the top of this one. Oh, I'm tempted to blow right here. So that spot is not the prettiest. Should I or shouldn't I? Hmm. I'm going to. going to blow it out this way. And torch. Oh yeah. This one's a keeper. All right, I hope you guys like that. And um, the colors I used on here that always seem to work for me all the time is that is that turquoise, the cobalt blue, and the purple. And a lot of yellow. You, you gotta throw in some yellow to light things up and a lot of white because you can see the white just sinks through, um, but blowing it, brings it out. I think it's really pretty. It's a pretty pour. Look at those cells. Cool beans. I like this one. And, you know, like I said, I, I didn't measure, weigh anything, just kind of went by instinct. You want to get good at it, you have to, like, practice it. Practice, practice, practice. And this is an old canvas that I repurposed. I just gessoed over the other painting and 
poured right on top. And this is definitely better than what I had up underneath. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Oh, and don't forget to like. Bye.